In exercise 2321, we're trying to accomplish a multi-step synthesis of an amine. And what you'll notice about this amine is that the nitrogen is bonded to one, two, three carbons. That is a tertiary amine. Now we've learned three sort of new ways of making amines in this chapter. So far, we've learned the Gabriel synthesis, but that can only make a primary amine. We've learned the azide synthesis, but that also <clears throat> excuse me, can only make a primary amine. And we've learned reductive amination. Now that can make any type of amine, primary, secondary, or tertiary. Well, we have a tertiary amine here. And so maybe the, the um, reductive amination would be a way to synthesize this. Now who knows if, if this will connect with our starting molecule. All we know is that we can make a tertiary amine by doing the azide synthesis here, or by doing the, excuse me, by doing the reductive amination here. So if we were doing reductive amination, you could, you would, the first step would be to break all the bonds between the nitrogen and the carbon. If we're thinking backwards and we're thinking, okay, I want to make this, what do I need? So I can make this if I have what? And to figure that out, you sort of break each of the bonds between the nitrogens, the nitrogen and the carbons. And then, where those bonds were, where the nitrogen was bonded, you add in a carbonyl. And that would allow us to, to make this tertiary amine in three steps, using ammonia, where the carbons were bonded, we add hydrogens onto the nitrogen, using ammonia and these three carbonyls, much like we did in, in the previous videos, the previous few videos. So that's how we, that's what we would need in order to make this molecule from a, using a reductive amination. We would have to add ammonia to that strange looking carbonyl compound, and we would need to do it in the presence of an acid catalyst and a weak reducing agent like sodium cyanoborohydride, NABH3CN. So if we only had this molecule, then we could make that one. Well, that doesn't really help us because we don't have that molecule. It always helps though, because um, we draw it this way because it looks like the product that, we're, that we were, wanted to make, but sometimes we can see connections if we draw it in the more conventional way. So let's try to do that. Just numbering this just to keep track of things. I'm going to number this seven, eight, nine carbons. So if we had nine carbons, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'll number those. Ooh, and actually, oops, let's actually do this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now we have a carbonyl on carbon number one, so I'll draw that in. We have a carbonyl on carbon number five, I'll draw that in. And we have a carbonyl on carbon number nine, I'll draw that in. And these are on the ends, so I'll draw in the hydrogens just to make them cl more clearly aldehydes. So this molecule here is the same, these two are the same down there. Okay. Let me get rid of these orange numbers, just so it seems less complicated and distracting. Now if we compare this molecule with what we start with, we at least see some connection. After all, if you bring this up here, if we bring this up here, we could see how these match, so that's like one, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven, eight, and nine. You could see that you'd have the same sort of chain there. And now, 
it would be uh, impressive if you could see a connection there. But at least you, this, this part of the molecule should have looked somewhat similar. Now what you'll notice is on the carbons where we have the carbonyls, one, five, and nine, those are the carbons that are in the double bond here. In other words, if only we could break this double bond and turn the double bond into carbonyls, then we can get this compound that we need. And we can do that. The way to do that is with ozonolysis. If you do ozonolysis on an alkene, and that's bubbling ozone, O3 gas, and you follow it up with dimethyl sulfide, DMS, it breaks the bond between the alkene, the double bond between the carbons, and in its place, so you break that bond, and in its place, you have a carbonyl. But notice when we do that, we have our final product. We have a, a, a carbonyl on carbon number one, on carbon number five, and on carbon number nine. So really, as strange and, and different as these molecules looked, it only takes three steps to turn that original molecule into the final one. The first step is to add ozone. And then as part of the ozonolysis, in a separate step, you'd add dimethyl sulfide. That would give you this here, which is the same thing as this here. Once you have that, we can add ammonia, an acid catalyst, and sodium cyanoborohydride, and that will undergo a reductive amination to give us our final product. So that third step would be adding ammonia, an acid catalyst, and sodium cyanoborohydride. And those, or in that, is the synthesis for turning this molecule on the left to the molecule on the right. So there were two crucial things we had to see. We had to see that we had a tertiary amine, and the only way we really know how to make that so far is with a reductive amination. So we thought backwards about what type of a molecule we would need in order to do that. And the other thing we'd have to see is that we can turn an alkene into two carbonyls by doing ozonolysis. The last skill is a useful one, and that, that the last skill that this exercise requires you to know or to be able to use, and that is drawing things in different ways and seeing connections between different drawings. And if you aren't adept at maybe seeing the same molecule drawn different ways, then I strongly encourage you to number the chains and redraw them, and sometimes that will allow you to see connections that you didn't see before.